Regular viewers, especially listeners of my podcast, will know what a fan I am of Bruce Schneier. He's a cryptographer who's created a lot of respected algorithms, especially Blowfish and Twofish. He's also written a lot of books, including Applied Cryptography, the one I cut my teeth on back in the 90s. It's amazing, and although the algos are all out of date, I love the examples and descriptions and keep finding myself going back to it. I am a really big fan. But I read this article of his, and I gotta say how disappointed I was. Schneier's an excellent cryptographer and cybersecurity expert, but he doesn't seem to be all that clued in on economics or public choice theory. Last September, California passed SB 327, Information Privacy Connected Devices. The purpose of this bill is to regulate the security of IoT devices or Internet of Things. It's true that these things are insecure and cause a lot of problems and steps need to be taken to secure them, but I don't see government regulation as being the answer. I found a lot to criticize about this bill, but Schneier seems to have bought into it, so let's go through this article and see why. By developing more advanced security features and building them into these products, hacks can be avoided. The problem is that there is no monetary incentive for companies to invest in the cybersecurity measures needed to keep their products secure. Consumers will buy products without proper security features, unaware that their information is vulnerable. And current liability laws make it hard to hold companies accountable for shoddy software security. It falls upon lawmakers to create laws that protect consumers. While the U.S. government is largely absent in this area of consumer protection, the state of California has recently stepped in and started regulating the Internet of Things, or IoT devices sold in the state, and the effects will soon be felt worldwide. California's new SB 327 law, which will take effect in January 2020, requires all connected devices to have a reasonable security feature. Yeah, nothing at all vague about that. I don't want it to sound like I'm going to be too hard on Schneier here. He does realize that this law is vague and problematic. He complains about its vagueness and how so much will be left up to the interpretation of the Attorney General. But if anything, this makes his defense of the law even more confusing. But the main problem with this law isn't so much that it's vague, but that this really isn't the proper approach to security, and I would have hoped that Schneier would recognize that. Security is not an extra feature that you stick on. Adding things such as a firewall or antivirus onto an IoT device will not help things. Those things are needed on personal computers because of user activity, but that isn't an issue with these. But if you add an antivirus or firewall, you'll just make things worse by increasing the attack surface. And besides, when people install IoT devices in their homes, they install them behind their router which provides a firewall, and a more secure one than one running directly on the device would be. And then there's the issue of patches. Although it's a good idea for a device to be able to receive updates, there's no guarantee that vendors will supply them, that users will apply them, or that they won't be vulnerable to hackers substituting their own updates because the vendor didn't apply proper digital signature checking to them. All of these are examples of things we've seen in the real world. The NotPetya ransomware attack is considered to be the most costly cyber attack in history and it worked by subverting automated patches. And those patches go right past firewalls and AV software. It may sound counterintuitive, but in many ways it might actually be worse to implement automated patches, at least if implemented incorrectly, than it would be to make the device unable to receive updates at all. And what are the chances that the AG is going to have any understanding of these issues? Remember, the interpretation for most of this law is going to be up to him. There's just one specific in the law that's not subject to the Attorney General's interpretation. Default passwords are not allowed. This is a good thing. They are a terrible security practice. But it's just one of dozens of awful security measures commonly found in IoT devices. The Mirai botnet stunned the world by its ability to find and take over IoT devices and make them part of its network. It's implicated in several of the most disruptive distributed denial of service attacks ever and it did so largely by exploiting these default passwords. The problem here, which Snyder seems to have missed, is that there isn't a single default password on the system. The problem with Mirai wasn't that there were all these passwords set to the default. Most of the devices would actually have been in compliance with the language of this new law because they require the user to create a new password before they can operate it. 
The problem was that there were also other passwords for things like Telnet interfaces, and these were largely not put in place by the vendor. They were put in place by the manufacturers that made the chips the vendors put in place, and the vendors weren't necessarily in any good position to know that these hard-coded passwords were there. And since most of these chip makers are located in China, they wouldn't feel any need to follow this California law. I'm sure these lawmakers have our best interests at heart, but they just don't have the understanding to put all of this knowledge into a law. Which is why Schneier's next sentence is really scary coming from a cybersecurity professional. This law is not a panacea, but we have to start somewhere, and it is a start. Yes, it's the politician's fallacy. Government has to do something! It can't just do nothing! The thing is, people aren't just sitting around doing nothing, waiting for government to step in. Wi-Fi routers are being made with isolation modes, meaning devices can't see each other on the local network. IoT worms spread around largely because people have their personal computers infected with malware, and it looks around on the local network for devices to infect. And then once an IoT device is already infected, it looks around on the local network infecting others. Isolation mode stops that in its tracks. They're also turning off by default the ability to manage the device from over the internet, requiring a local connection. Although users can turn it back on, having it on by default created a lot of problems with malware coming in from over the internet on these interfaces. The industry is also standardizing the digital signing of software updates, ensuring that only the vendor can update the software on the device. Also, newer technologies like IPv6 and 5G are going to make most of these attacks moot. And something else that makes this law an epic fail. Every time we secure things one way, creative and clever hackers find other ways. Security is an ever-changing process. The way we secured our data 10 years ago is not the way we secure it today, and it won't be the way we'll secure it 10 years from now. This law is backward-looking, closing the barn door not only after the horses are gone, but after other people have already closed it. Vendors are already ahead of the government here by implementing things like better reporting systems. Tesla got egg on their faces when it came out that they were using insecure 40-bit keys in their cars, something else this law would do absolutely nothing to address. But the real point is that when security analysts discovered it, they notified Tesla, and Tesla promptly fixed the problem. A good notification system like that is probably the most important thing that companies can do, yet this law would do nothing to help bring it about. Things are being done, and they're a lot more effective than anything this law requires. This law is not a start. We've already taken far more of a start than this law represents. If anything, this law is a step backwards. I miss the Bruce Schneier who wrote, The lesson here is that it is inefficient to protect ourselves with laws. We need to protect ourselves with mathematics. Encryption is too important to be left solely to governments. Though the legislation covers only the state of California, its effects will reach much further. All of us, in the United States or elsewhere, are likely to benefit because of the way software is written and sold. Once California enforces minimum security standards on IoT devices, manufacturers will have to rewrite their software to comply. At that point, it won't make sense to have two versions, one for California and another for everywhere else. It's much easier to maintain the single, more secure version and sell it everywhere. The problem is that not all vendors supply devices worldwide. The Mirai botnet was 200,000 devices that were largely outside the United States by vendors that didn't sell in the U.S. This isn't going to apply to any devices that are made to be sold in the Philippines or Ukraine. Schneier has also completely fallen for the myth that regulation spurs innovation. But once government steps in and imposes more stringent security regulations, companies have an incentive to meet those standards as quickly, cheaply, and effectively as possible. This means more security innovation, because now there's a market for new ideas and new products. We've seen this pattern again and again in safety and security engineering, and we'll see it with the Internet of Things as well. I have no idea where he thinks he's seen it with safety and security engineering, but if he's like most people, he's completely misattributing it. People think that it's because of government that we have seatbelts in cars, when they were standard by the time government started requiring them. 
Government is like someone who jumps in front of a parade and pretends to be leading it. People think government keeps the products we buy safe when it's largely due to private organizations like UL. If anything, this is going to retard innovation by increasing uncertainty since vendors can never be certain how the AG is going to interpret this vague law. Something like a UL mark for cybersecurity would be far better than this, and Schneier's point that users don't know how to buy secure devices is irrelevant, because this would be an incentive for retailers. Most people probably don't even know that the UL mark even exists, but it still protects them because Walmart demands that electronic devices have a certification from UL or a similar organization so that they'll know they're selling safe devices to their customers. There's no reason something like that couldn't work for cybersecurity. But if there's one thing that public choice theory teaches us, it's that government passes regulations that feel good and sell well to the voters. They don't think in terms of what will protect people, but who can be blamed. And just like with the TSA, government wants solutions that are visible and out there in people's faces. Real security is about prevention, but laws and regulations don't give you prevention because that just isn't visible to the voter. So thanks for watching while I got all this off my chest. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and subscribe and consider using the links below to give a one-time donation via PayPal or crypto or become a regular supporter at Patreon or subscribe star once they get their payment processing worked out. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay strong and be free.